What's going on fellow web developers? My name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to the channel. Um, so recently I've been getting a lot of messages like this and also this and also this and all of these. So as you can see, it's a lot of messages asking me what is your VS Code extensions for autocomplete? What is your VS Code extensions? What is your VS Code theme? That one comes up way too often. I promise you that is a daily occurrence. So guys, today I'm finally going to answer your questions. So without further ado, let's jump in to VS Code. So first off, I wanted to tell you guys that I use Visual Studio Code. If that wasn't obvious, then, you know, there you go. Now you know. So I use Visual Studio Code. And one of the questions I always get is, how does VS Code autocomplete? Or how are you autocomplete? How do you complete your tags? How How is your tags working? Now, that is the work of VS Code's built-in extension called Emmet. Now, this, you don't have to install this. This is built in. So if I create a new file and we select HTML. You can see here, I can just type in test, or not test, sorry, H1. And there you go, we've got H1. I can even put an exclamation mark and get the whole base HTML layout with the doc title, oh, hello, uh, with the doc type, with the HTML tag, the header tag, with metadata, title, body, and all that stuff. So you can see there, that's all done in. I can do H1, I could say hello. I can even do something as crazy as this. I can say a header with a nav bar that has a UL, that has an LI and an A tag, but the LI is times three and a bam there you go you can see that is the power of emmet you could even have gave them classes you could say the header had the class of head uh, uh the navigation had the class of menu and then the list had a star menu list and then we can do the same thing again bam and there you go they've even got class on them you could do a f uh, there's loads of things you could do with it you need to go look it out but i'm not going to go too much into this because this is not the point of this video but there you go so that is how emmet works now another Another tool I use is Co Git Copilot. When I'm writing a YouTube video, anything like that, I always have Copilot enabled because it's so useful and it makes things so much faster. So if you're seeing me complete a whole segment of code in like a tab, by hit, literally hitting tab, then that's why. It's because Copilot, it's super awesome, although I don't recommend it in production just of yet because there's a few licensing issues. It uses code from private repositories, and you know there's a few issues, and also you need to kind of know what it's it's writing before you just auto-complete it as well. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the reason why um, I only use Copilot for, you know, the side stuff, the fun, like, test projects, and just to test it out because it's pretty awesome. Otherwise, I use tab 9. So let me go through my extensions other than Copilot. So the first one is Atom Keymap, pretty straightforward. I used to use Atom, I swapped to VS Code, I preferred the Atom Keymap, so I kept it. Um, the next one I use is Bracket Pair Colorizer 2. This basically, well, as you can see, it, it, it colorizes your bracket. So each nested bracket will have a different color. You can see here you've got yellow, uh, purple, and blue, and it also gives you this nice little line to show you, a colored line to show you what block you're currently in, which is really nice. You then obviously GitHub Copilot here, made by GitHub. Uh, then we have Git Lens. Now this is awesome. Now my, the only the only reason I have this is for the not for all this nice like sort of features here. You know, the going back and forth. It's for Git Blame. So if any of my team, you know, do something, I can make sure people know it wasn't me who broke the website. Git Blame is great. <laughs> Oh god. Um Jupyter is a part of the Jupyter key map um extension here. So basically what this does is it well it adds Jupyter key map, which is all for Python, I believe. I'm not gonna lie, I I think this was added automatically accidentally in the bottom right one time it popped up and I hit it. So I don't dare delete it in case it's really useful, but I'm pretty sure it's it's for something. I'd in Jupyter, no, but I don't know what it's for. We'll just pretend I know what it's for. There you go. Uh the next thing is material 
icon theme. So if you see in the left, I have some really, obviously not right now, but normally when I'm coding, I have some really nice um, looking icons. That's because of the material icon theme. You can see all the amazing um, icons here. There's so many. They literally, I don't think I found a file that doesn't have a cool icon. The, literally. And even folders, even the folder names will get it. Like, look, they even have one for ginger. Ginger, ginger is how you say it. that's that kind of sounds like ginger. Um, anyway, and husky, you know, there's some really cool ones. There's so many cool icon themes there. The next one is prettier. This speaks for itself, it pretties my code when I'm typing. So if I copy and paste code from Stack Overflow, I mean, what do you mean? I copy code, I never copy code, I write it all out myself. Uh, but if I do, then it will automatically uh, format it for me, which is super useful. Now, PyLands, this is um, basically a bunch of features for um, when I'm writing Python. It's a new thing I've been doing, so I don't know too much about it, but I do know it's pretty awesome and it was definitely good. So then I have Python IntelliSense again to auto fill out code as I'm writing um, and all this stuff. You can see it has like the, you know, the the config files for when I run it. And yeah, so it's pretty awesome. It's pretty great. It works really well. The next thing is the REST client is one of my favorites because I don't need to have anything else installed. I can make requests like this. So I can say, okay, I want to get post to comments, a new comment called name with a time and date uh, via this inside of VS Code. So I don't need posts. Uh, I don't need Postman. I don't need anything like that. I don't need a third party system. I can do it inside of here. As you can see, like when, when he makes a request here, you'll see, bam, he gets the response on the right side and it's really good. So that's that's why I use that. The next one is SAS, speaks for itself. It's my SAS um, highlighting, autocomplete and formatter. So that one's straightforward. Now, now, this is the one people ask about all the time. Tyler, what theme do you use? Tyler, what theme do you use? Tyler, what theme? What color theme do you use, Tyler? So, guys, it is Synthwave 84. Now, please stop asking me. Synthwave 84, it's by Rob Owen. It's really awesome. It looks really good. I could have it glow if I wanted to. I'm not going to because it would blow my mind. Although, I do really love the, the gradient underlay. I might see if I can get that. That's cool. But otherwise, you know, it's really cool. It's really nice. It gives you this nice purpley sort of environment. It just... It just looks, oh, look, disable glow. That's what I have on because I don't want the glow blinding my eyes. Um, and you can change the brightness, which is pretty cool. But yeah, so there's a bunch of different features for this pack. It's really cool. Definitely check it out. Um, I love the theme. It's great. Next up, Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. It's IntelliSense for Tailwind. It's actually amazing, this tool. You can see on the right, it has all this. But if you change your config, these will change with your config. So it's great. It works really well. So if you're working with Tailwind, definitely, definitely use Tailwind CSS IntelliSense. Now, if you use Vue.js, you will know that Futur is the is the extension for you. It's by Pine Wu, really good tool. Uh, it's a bunch of tools, but its main features here are syntax highlighting, semantics, snippets, Emmet um, feet. Because normally Emmet doesn't work with stuff like Vue or React because it's inside a JS folder, you know, like the HTML Emmet. Um, but this adds support for it. You've got linting, formatting, IntelliSense, and the rest of these things. You know, they're probably important, but I don't know. I don't use them. C Sharp is when I do Unity stuff. So if I'm working with um, any sort of, uh, well, if I'm working with anything .NET or anything like that, it's all in C Sharp, mainly for Unity and stuff like that. Now, the next one is ES7 React Redux GraphQL and React Native Snippets. This one is for my React. It's basically what Futa does for React and React, React Native. It's a bunch of snippets. It's really cool. If I go down here, you You'll see, here we are. If you type RCE in, you get this whole snippet pasted out for you. RCC, same thing there. It's just the same thing. It's really good. I definitely recommend it if you're working in React. The next one is Markdown now. I haven't used it in a while, but it's really cool if you're wanting to write up a quick Markdown file and you want to see it on the right. That's basically how it is. It gives you, basically just allows it to work. It's really good. It looks really good, as you can see there. And it even looks good with the syntax highlighting, so it's nice. Tab nine. So it, obviously I did say Copilot is mainly for testing and using outside of um, professional commercial work. If I'm doing something for commercial work, obviously I have to be aware of licensing and stuff like that. So that's where tab nine comes in. And it's basically a, it's basically, it's really good. It is good, but it just doesn't compare to Copilot in my opinion. Maybe I'm using it wrong, but it's good. I use it just to help speed it up a little bit. It's not as good, I don't think. I think Copilot definitely is got one up on this although it does use some dodgy code which is its own fault so you know whoops but anyway that's fine otherwise tab 9 is great for commercial use definitely recommend it if you're going to be using that and you haven't got access to copilot yet
Um, and Unity Code Snippets, last one on the list by Kleber Silver. Kleber Silver, sorry if I butcher your name. Uh, Unity 3D Development, it speaks for itself. It gives me a bunch of snippets for Unity and basically makes it a lot easier to develop him. So there you go. So that is all my extensions, 20 of them installed. It's not all of them activated, just a few. Most of them are language or framework or library specific. So like the few stuff, the React stuff, that's all. I, I kind of disable them depending on whether I'm using them or not. So they don't, you know, bulk down my load time for this and cause any issues later on. You can see I've got a bunch of recommendations here. Beautify, you know, pro probably should use that instead of Priya, but you know, we move. Uh, ESLint, you know, there's a bunch of different ones in there. Docker, I mean, I need to learn Docker. It's something I've been wanting to for a while. So, you know, there's a few things I've got to get installed and this might change in a year from now. But guys, for now, I think I've explained what I need to explain. You know what I use, VS Code. You know the extensions I use. You know the theme I use. That seems to have answered all of your questions. Now, guys, if you do have any more questions, drop them in the comment section below and I will answer them as quickly as I possibly can. But for now, guys, thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up headbutt that subscribe button i highly don't recommend your head but it not only will it not work you won't subscribe to me but you know you'll probably end up just hurting yourself or breaking your screen and then i don't want to get the blame for that so don't do that but anyway guys don't forget to hit that like button with the mouse with the mouse click it click 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 the button guys all right guys anyway thanks for watching this video and i will see you in the next one peace out